hello! I'm Steve, and thank you for checking out the Model T Dice Box. Let's get rolling! Okay, most of us are familiar with these kinds of dice here. There's the D4, the D6, up to the D20, even the D30. The system handles those just fine. Let's go into the uh, standard expression screen, type in the roll we'd like to use, and away we go. Let's start with some standard rolls. I'll press 1 for the standard expression, and we'll see the standard expression formula there waiting for us. Let's try something simple. A 2d8. Let's add 2d8. Press enter, and it rolls those dice for us. If we want to roll that same one again, I can press R or enter as the default, and it'll roll that same combination again. There's an 8 and a 6. That's nice. Now, if I want to try a different roll, all I have to do is press O for options. Back to the formula. Let's go with 3D20 minus 4. A little more complicated of a roll there, uh, but it handles it like a champ. An 8, a 14, a 7 minus the 4 is 25. And then to go back to the menu, we just press M. Okay, so if you're playing Traveler, we've got you covered there too. A Traveler includes the notion of a D66, but they don't mean a single 60-sided, 60 66-sided dice. They mean two six-sided dice, where the first roll is the tens digit, and the second roll is the ones digit. So let's see how the system handles a, a Traveler roll. Okay, for a Traveler roll, which is a D66, I'm gonna go into the standard expression, I'll add the expression bar here, I will type a, uh, let's see, a 3D66. And it'll ask me, are you rolling a traveler? I can either press yes or enter. I'll press yes. And there's a one and a five is the first combination. One and a one is the second combination. And a six and a two is the third combination. And then there it shows that it knows what it's doing. That's my roll for a traveler. Now in the continuum mechanic, uh, they have a notion of the one big score. The one big score is a multiplication effect where you roll 4d100 and multiply the results together rather than add them. So you could simply do a 4d100 in the standard expression screen or a 4 times d100 and it'll help you out. And I thought just for the kicks, let's just go ahead and add the multiplication factor uh, for all standard expressions. So whether you're playing um, Continuum uh, or any other game where you feel like multiplying the dice results together, have fun with that. Let's take a look. For a Continuum roll of the one big score, simply go into, into the standard expression, type my 4D100, and it'll ask, is this your one big score? I'll say yes, and here comes the results. I got a 96, a 25, an 87, and a 10. And there's my results for the one big score. I can press R to roll that same score again. I can press Enter to do the same. Or I could press Menu to go back. Let's try one other thing with the standard expression. Let's get in there and play with that keep high or keep low. That's what the L and H are at the end there, is keep the highest or keep the lowest. Let's roll a 6D18 and we're going to subtract the lowest. So 6d18 minus l, we'll say let's uh, do the 18 here and keep the lowest. And there comes the results. It'll figure out which one is the lowest. Looks like the lowest was a 5, we're dropping that. And then there's the result. We could also do a, uh, let's see, a 3d20 plus 2 minus h, which uh, is a 3d20, it adds 2 to it, and it uh, drops out the highest dice roll. So let's see, we've got a, a 7, uh, an 11, and the third one is a 16. 16 is the highest, so we'll drop that, add 2 to the result, and there we are at a 20. Now if we also, instead of dropping, we could also just keep the highest. So I could go back to options, I'll do a, a 3d... Uh, 10 plus H keeps the highest instead of a minus, which drops it. So we're going to 4, a 2, and a 7, and keeping the 7. Let's take a look at the dice pool, option 2. 
In option two, it asks us how, what's the quantity of the dice pool. Let's say we have a dice pool of seven. What type of dice do we want to roll? Hmm, well, this time we're going to do a d12. And do we have a success threshold? Uh, meaning if it rolls this number or higher, then it's a success or not. Let's start with just keep, keep uh, keeping just a straight old dice pool. We'll just press enter. No modifier. Modifier would increase or decrease the size of the pool. Go like that. See what we've got. 7 D12s. It's going to give us a 3 and a 2 and a 2. 6, 9, 1, 1. And it just adds it up nice and easy. If we want to have a little more fun with it, uh, we could do a uh, 5 D... Um, quantity is 5. And um, we're going to do a D20. And uh, the success threshold this time is going to be an 18. So, and then no modifier. And so now it knows, okay, anything greater than an 18 is a success. Looks like that 19 is a winner. The next two didn't work out so well for us. Uh, and that's it. So just the one over, one success, and we had one pip over, because the 19 is one greater than the 18. Exploding dice is basically a dice pool where if you roll the top die number, uh, then uh, you can roll another dice as a bonus turn, bonus roll. So if I press three, let's see, uh, here's, the, uh, here's the formula. So let's go a uh, four, D, eight, and just for kicks, we're gonna throw in two at the end. Now, if we happen to roll an eight, that eight will explode and give us a chance to roll a second dice. Let's see if we got, oh, there's an eight. So the bonus roll was a seven. So there we go, a four, a seven, the eight exploded to cause that extra seven, and then the final roll was a two. And then we added two on top of it, and there's our 30. That's a little bit about how exploding dice works. The Fate system is another popular gaming system used in uh, many different uh, actual games here. And they have the notion of a positive dice roll, a negative dice roll, uh, and a neutral, which is uh, reflected here with these specially printed dice. Let's go into the system and see how the system handles the fate, and uh, ideally we will place well on our ladder. Let's roll our fate. Fate is menu number four. Press four. It asks us what our skill rating it is, and it gives us a default of two. I'm gonna say we're gonna roll a three. That's our skill rating. Rolling our fate. So we've got a neutral and a positive and a positive and a neutral. So that equates to two because the positives count up. Neutrals are like a zero. Our skill rating was three coming into this. Therefore we rolled a five on the ladder and that is superb. Let's tempt our fate. Let's test our fate. And try one more. I'm just going to press enter to roll that same roll again. Rolling our feet. Ooh, a minus, a plus, a minus, and a plus. So they all neutralize. Three carries, and it's a good on the ladder. Uh, one more just for kicks. And then, uh, let's see, third time's a charm. Minus, minus, ooh, uh, minus. Maybe I should have quit when I was ahead. <laughs> uh, our skill coming in was a three. Um, and then we minus all that out, that one positive carries, and uh, it was an average roll for us. So the feng shui system has the notion of positive dice and negative dice. These are some feng shui dice, uh, but you could use any uh, six-sided dice as long as one is one color and the other is a different color. So they recommend using red for positive and then white for negative. Uh, and in our system, uh, we'll use the inverse to differentiate between the two. Let's take a look at some feng soy rolls. Okay, let's roll the feng soy system, which is number five. Press that. Is this an open roll or a closed roll? The open roll can explode, whereas the closed roll is just straight down the middle. Let's do an open one, which is the default. Open roll, our action value defaults to five. Let's say uh, we're gonna come in a little under, we're gonna do a four action value coming into this. Now let's see, so there's the positive and the negative coming up here. Our positive number is a six minus the three. Now that six exploded there. You see how it adds another five on top uh, because this was an open roll. Um, six being the top dice, uh, the top die number, uh, we got to explode that. So we added a five to it. The swerve therefore is an eight. Add our action value of four to it and our result was 12. Let's try this one more time. We'll do the same thing. I'll simply press uh, enter or R for roll. 
to roll it one more time. Let's see what we got. A 5 minus a 2, therefore our swerve is a 3. Add the 4 to it, and our action result is a 7. So that's a little bit about the Feng Shui system. Now the clockwork version of uh, Space 1889 uses what's called the uh, Ubiquity system. Now you can get specialized dice for it if you'd like. Uh, these are some uh, Ubiquity dice. But the general idea here is to roll even numbers. Uh, so you could use any die with an even number of sides. Uh, and your goal is to roll even numbers, uh, which count as successes. And you set aside the odd ones. So, let's see how uh, Ubiquity works in Dicebox. Okay, in the Ubiquity system, we're looking for evens and odds. We want the evens. Starts with the dice pool. Let's say our pool is six. Defaults to D10. That's what Ubiquity um, usually uses, but as we've seen, you can roll any kind of dice you'd like, as long as it's even. Notice the even at the front there. Uh, let's do, just for fun, uh, D20, uh, D24. You notice you don't actually have to put the D in front. It'll still figure it out. So six of D24. There's a six that's uh, even. Uh, let's see what else we're gonna get here. There's a 16, and that's it, so two successes. If we wanna try a different combination here, just for fun, I'll press O for options. Our dice pool quantity this time is gonna be uh, a little bit smaller. We'll go four. Uh, the even dice type, uh, let's have some fun and just go a D4, and a four of D4. Here we go. Got a one and a four, that's nice. It's highlighted there to show that it's um, a success for us there. A couple of fours, a couple of ones. Nice symmetrical results, and it's uh, two successes. Now one roll engine, uh, the OR engine here, uh, is uh, used in Rain and Wild Talents and some other cool titles. Uh, it's a dice pool mechanic that goes on uh, runs of the same number. Uh, so it, um, it has a notion of a width and a height. So the, the more you roll of the same die type, uh, the same die result is, is the width and the die itself is the height. Uh, now um, in the one roll engine you can choose which dice pool uh, you want. If I hit M for more, Hollow Point is a specific version of that uh, that's based on the D6, um, uh, D6 dice. So let's give that one a try. I'm going to choose B for Hollow Point. Dice pool quantity, uh, let's go with an 8 and see what we get out of our D6s here. Notice that's a default. So we're looking for pairs or more. There's a pair of 2s already. So we know we've at least got uh, one pair to play with. A pair of 3s. Pair of fours, another four, three fours, and another two. All right, so we have three twos, two threes, and three fours. Now the player gets to choose which of those is most advantageous to them, which is kind of neat. It takes out the notion of um, uh, an initiative system, and um, you can play a little bit more strategically uh, based on what you want to do with these results. Uh, that's a little bit about hollow points, and uh, by extension, the more uh, open-ended um, one roll engine again where you can choose the dice type hollow point says hey good news it's a d6 okay the icon system is uh, from last unicorn and it's used in games like uh, Star Trek and Dune it's a, a dice pool system using d6s uh, it's equal the pool size is equal to an attribute and it's a keep the highest uh, mechanic and uh, the interesting thing there is you get to have a drama die you choose which one is it and if that happens to be a six, uh, then you keep the second highest number as well. So let's uh, try that out. Our ability score is a five. That means our pool size is gonna be five. It knows that and asks you which of those five is the drama die. Let's say two. Let's find out right away. Now at, um, let's see what we've got here. Drama die is a four. So that means we don't get a bonus. It'll just keep the highest to whatever we get here. That happens to be the five. It adds it to my ability coming in, and there's my result. Let's say we want to try once more, because you get a second roll, or in this case, you're trying to make a demo and show off a feature based on using random numbers. <laughs> so uh, let's see what happens. A one, a uh, four again. Okay, well, that's cool. You see how the uh, results come through? Looks like the five is our highest so far, and there it is. That's pretty great. One more time just for kicks and then we'll uh, we'll call it quits with the icon system. Uh, six in the wrong spot there. We keep a five this time. 
is our drama die. Uh, and then we're going to keep the six. So you get the idea. And I wish you the very best of luck on your uh, trekking and doing adventures there. Get that spice and um, have a good drama die. <laughs> Uh, Adventure Game Engine, or the Age system there, is used in some popular titles. There's The Expanse and Mutants and Masterminds. This is the time travel um, expansion pack for it there, uh, for Mutants and Masterminds. Uh, it um, uh, goes like this, when hit A. It asks you, is this an ability test or a standard role? There's a, several predefined standard roles that you could choose from if I was to hit S. Let's do an ability test. Those are a bit more fun. My ability score is going to be uh, an 8. And uh, this is a 3d6 system, so it's going to roll 3d6 uh, for you. Um, I don't have an, a, a focus bonus this time. You might, depending on your situation. I'll say no. You get to choose a drama die. The drama die can bring on um, uh, some cool results for you. Uh, you get to choose. Uh, if you had physical dice, you'd say, I want to use this one as the drama die, and the other two are not. Uh, here you get to specify, and we will go, let's keep the drama to the end. I'll choose the third die. So I'm rolling uh, my 3d6 here, a 3, and a 5, and a 3. So what happened here is the, the 3 is highlighted since it's the drama die. And it adds, uh, you know, it adds those together, uh, plus my ability is 19. The stunt points come about uh, because of the pair. So the uh, the pair there is of threes. Uh, what you do is you get the uh, whatever the pairing is, even if it's die one and two or the pair, you get the um, the uh, drama die is the number of stunt points. So that three there is because of the drama die. Um, I'll do one more roll just to see what happens here. Another three d six um, against the same targets and all that good stuff. Uh, and it looks like. Um, Yep, a uh, pair of fives this time. Five and a one and a five uh, gives me five stun points. Let's try one more. And um, and then we'll say the age uh, is come of age here. I should save that joke for the end, but uh, hopefully that'll work out for you. All right, this time um, another uh, pair of threes uh, with a two up front. Well, that about wraps it up. So uh, thank you again for checking this out, and uh, good luck with your rolls. Take care.